So how do we introduce color into our Schlieren images? By using color filters. We have a strip of red filter and a strip of green filter butted together sitting in front of the camera lens. Our white light source, point light source, which bathes the mirror uh, with white light, that light is focused right at the junction of the red and green filter. If there is a refraction that's happening down there where the mirror is that tends to refract the light upwards, then it passes through the red filter. If it refracts it down, then it passes through the green filter. And that's the color that the camera sees when that refraction occurs. So let's see what information the color gives us. Uh, remember, it is the change in density in the air that refracts the light. So if there is, for example, a hot soldering iron, um, the density of the air around the soldering iron is less than the surrounding air because this is hot air. So if I hold this in front of the mirror, you see that when the uh, density of the air changes from a high density in this cooler air down here to the hot air, then the light is refracted and bent through the green filter and uh, it appears green. Whereas at the top, where we're going from a low density to a high density, the opposite happens. Then the light is refracted in the other direction through the red filter. So um, this is true also for cold objects. My um, assistant, Alan, is going to bring an ice cube tray out of the refrigerator. So that is cold, and the cold um, air around it is going to be more dense than the surrounding air. So you see, when we go from a less dense to a more dense region, then the um, light is refracted through the red filter, whereas when we go from a more dense to a less dense region, it's refracted into the green filter. So it's exactly the opposite of this cold object and the red object. A uh, hot object. <laughs> so now that we have an understanding of what the colors mean, we can take another closer look at the uh, standing wave that we've seen before in white light. So to do that, we're going to zoom in uh, a little closer and see what colors appear, if any. So right now, I'm turning up the intensity of the light. And lo and behold, we see alternating bands of red and green. So let's remember the red bands show a change in density of the air from less dense to more dense, and the green the opposite. So where those colors appear, that's where the largest changes in density or pressure, if you like, appear. Those are the pressure antinodes. For our final demonstration, let's use our standing wave to levitate some small objects, in this case, styrofoam balls. And what I'm interested in is to see where those balls want to settle down. So I'll turn up the power. So I'm going to take a little styrofoam ball and place it in the space. And you notice the ball settles down in a red band. If I take another one, that one too is in a red band. Now I've got two of them in one area.
One of them is in a green band. So you see the balls settle down where there are bands of color. Those bands of color are rapid changes of pressure or density, and those are the pressure antinodes. That is where the balls settle down.